Oi, boy! Hello and salutations, Great Britain and Northern Ireland. My name is James and welcome to another Eurovision Reaction video. And today, I'm going to do a review of the British entry for the Eurovision Song Contest 2021, which will take place this year, this May, at Rotterdam, the Netherlands. So let's get to it and start reviewing. Returning from the class of 2020 is Brit Wardy and Grammy-nominated James Newman, a singer-songwriter from the UK who was supposed to represent his home country last year with the song My Last Breath, but unfortunately he wasn't able to perform because of the cancellation of the Eurovision Song Contest brought upon by the global COVID-19 pandemic. But he now returns with a proper banger, a bap with the name Embers. So before anything else, here's a look of Embers by James Newman. <laughs> One thing I like about Embers is how British it actually sounds as a pop song. I and, and for that, I really do appreciate the efforts by the British broadcaster, the BBC, in bringing something to the table, a song that is very refle reflective of the British uh, music industry as a whole. This is something that you could actually hear being played on the radio. It is something that you could actually imagine being played as 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 record music to one of the UK's uh, popular reality shows with Big Brother UK, Love Island, so on and so forth. And yeah, I think this is one of the better efforts that the broadcaster has brought forth as for their Eurovision participation in recent years. We have to, I have to admit they have been languishing for, for, for a very long time. The British music industry is vibrant and they have been able to export their music to a lot of territories that I don't know why the BBC has not been able to tap into kind of resource that they already have in terms of bring of being becoming a more competitive um, country in in the Eurovision Song Contest. But I really am a fan of last year's effort, my last breath. I thought that was a good first step in the BBC's efforts to rehabilitate their image to the home audience in terms of, of what the British public think of Eurovision and also rehabilitating their brand to the rest of Europe. With that said, I do like a lot of a lot of the UK's entries in the past few years. It's just that I don't think uh, they're able to take advantage of the momentum they were supposed to have when they started uh, their national selection from 2016, uh, Eurovision, you decide. I thought it was it was a solid format, but I don't think they were able to hone it and shape it to a kind of uh, selection format that will that will serve as a strong um, alternative to the likes of Melody Festival from Sweden, Festival de Gaza from Portugal, Dance Melody Grand Prix, Norwegian Melody Grand Prix, and all those other strong national selections. I think they need to have a very solid selection method for which they will be able to uh, send a strong song, a strong artist. They will be able to bring forth a song that that we we I, we can honestly it's it's strong enough for the UK and strong enough to be sent into the contest. Especially now that they cannot afford to send any novelty acts, I think they really need to send something very serious. Be it a, ball, a strong ballad, a strong pop song, a strong pop, a strong dance number, anything that I think is most reflective of their music industry. I think that is the only way they will be able to become a very competitive uh, country in the contest. In terms of Embers, I really do like this song as a whole. I really like the production quality, I, like, I really like the music video that was presented when the song was first released. I also happened to really enjoy seeing um, James being in his happy place, being able to really 
uh, enjoy this whole process in his Eurovision journey. And yeah, I do think people are sleeping on on the United Kingdom this year. And I really do hope that they actually do well in the grand final. There are the the UK is already pre-qualified to be in the final, so they don't have to worry about having to go to the semi-final. With that said, it doesn't really mean that they have to be to play it safe just because they're already qualified. Are they really gonna have to step up in terms of their staging, in terms of their of the of James' overall vocal performance, and everything else to allow the UK entry to become a bit, something to watch out for. And from what I'm hearing, I think we're in for a good show this May. And I'm really, really excited for that. How I think it would do in Rotterdam? I think it would do, well, I'm hoping, because I don't know it with the UK. I really do hope that people respond to this very well. Uh, it's it's already a competitive song, so 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 there is no doubt about that. People will love it. I do hope that it does well enough for the UK to be able to break its long uh, drought in the bottom, I hope they would at least make it to at least on the left side of the scoring board, which it has in terms of of its jury performance back in 2017 when Lucy Jones was able to place tenth among among the juries uh, that that year in Kiev with her song "I Will." Uh, Never give up on you. Never got. Never give up on you. That's a pretty good song, if you ask me. But at the same time, I really hope that the song is accessible enough to be appreciated by a lot of people across Europe and Australia. And I hope it does get, it does earn the points that I'm sure it deserves. More than more, which is and more than enough to allow people watching from Britain to see the Eurovision Song Contest as not something that where everything where they believe everyone hates you. Everyone in Europe hates the UK. I don't think Europe hates the UK. It's just that the UK has not been doing enough to stay competitive for the for in, in, to be able to do well in the contest. Regardless of the artist or the song, as if they're not being competitive enough, I think they're always going to get mediocre results. And with that said, I really do wish the best of luck to James Newman. I know that uh, being the UK representative carries a lot of weight. He has the whole nation uh, being carried on his back, and I know it's a it's a whole lot of responsibility. First, he has to be able to endure a lot of criti criticism from naysayers from his own home country who have negative uh, opinions or negative impressions about the contest. No thanks to uh, to one Sir Terry Wogan. Mm. And I really do hope that Embers will be able to bring a fairly good result for the United Kingdom. So those were my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel for more Eurovision content and more. This has been James. Thank you very much for watching. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye, love.